Stop snitching, fam. Are you, man? Stop talking to the police, fam. Are you listening? Snitches get stitches, you know, fam. So, yeah. Gonna be touching upon snitching today. Are you fearless? Went running a couple of weeks ago. And after I go running, I usually just circle around my estate, just a little walk, just to cool down instead of going straight into my house. And I saw a bunch of police pitched up on my estate. And I thought, oh, I thought they might be going to raid some, some little ute around the corner who's always selling weed. He's so bait. But I noticed the police officers were going to people's houses, just putting some stuff through the door. So as I've gone back into my house, I've seen this on the floor. You know, they posted it through my letterbox. On the back it says, if you have any information about crime, you can contact us without the fear of revealing who you are. Fearless.com. And at the bottom it says, 100% safe, 100% anonymous. There's a lot of people out here who love to talk about snitches and if you snitch your pussy, snitches get stitches and that. This was brought to my attention a couple of months ago about the fear of snitching, about the fear of being labelled a grass. They said little bad breed pitney on my ass, they always kicking the ball, disturbing people. And my neighbour wanted to complain. She said she wanted to call the police because they're a fucking nuisance to her. Now, I didn't tell her to do it. And I don't know if she did, but I didn't tell her not to. If you're a person right now, you've got trouble with somebody and you know for a fact, you know for a fact that no confrontation is going to resolve this situation because everyone's afraid of a confrontation nowadays. Everybody is afraid to stick it on someone. Everyone's afraid to pull someone up. But let's say that you know for a fact, you're not being a coward, but you know for a fact, no confrontation is going to resolve this situation. Let's, let's say you've even had a confrontation and it's gone beyond that now. The next step is to take action. You need to call the police. If you suffer in silence, fuck what these idiots say about, oh, snitches are cowards. And if you suffer in silence, you are a coward. You need to speak up. Like the flipping little leaflet said, are you fearless? Yeah. Yeah. You need to be fearless. No one wants to be labelled as a snitch or a rat or a grass, but I'd rather be labelled as a snitch, grass, rat, whatever you want to call it, and have a good night's rest rather than Trying to save some kind of face for some street credibility. Because I'm scared to take action. No, I'm going to take action. If I was a person in that position. Now listen to all these. See, this is what gets on. There's a lot of people on the street. Man, talking about, oh, snitch this and snitch that. You're a pussy or you're a coward. If you... Most of them man there. Most of the men that are in jail for crimes, you know why they're in prison? <laughs> you, you think they're in prison because of CCTV and or fingerprints, DNA. No, most of them are in jail because their man then put them in jail. When most people go out and do moves, when man them go out and do crimes, when man them riding now, they're not on their own. They're with people. What happens is, the police, they round up five men. Nick, five men. Start interrogating every one of them. In every chain, there's a weak link. Someone gonna crack. The person who cracks, because they'll give them an attractive offer. The person who cracks is the person who reveals all. That's why most men are in jail. Fuck what you heard. Obviously, certain men do get uh, 
put in jail because obviously the CCTV, DNA and fingerprints and that. But a lot of men are in jail because of their coldies. Hollering about, stop snitching and that. Better the man them in these, better the man them in these gangs. Most of the man there, they, if they all face that situation, they'll be snitching. But stop snitching, fuck snitching. And, oh man, I don't know what's worse. The man them who act like they're bad, but then when it comes down to it, they start snitching. Or the fucking girls. Oh, they're, they're another sort. Oh, the girls. There's girl out here who love to holler, stop snitching, stop snitching. They think, there's girls out here who think their role. There's girls out here who think their street. Why? Because you went to a rough school. Because you banged a couple of the, the bad boys in the area. Oh, because you had a fight one time and you got slapped in handcuffs. Plenty of girls out here talking that, oh, stop snitching. What are you talking about snitching? What do you know about the roads? Most of these girls are talking about stop snitching and that. They know nothing about the roads. What, because you lived in the area? What, because your brother was this? Yeah, but what lifestyle have you lived? Have you been in the interview room before? Not for a little fight that you had outside a club. I'm not talking about a crime that you could be serving two, three, four, five years for. You been in the interview room? One time. Have you even been in the interview room one time to know about don't snitch and... And even some of these people as well, Manda Mangyal, who hold their mouth in the interview room. Yeah, it's easy to not snitch when you ain't, they ain't got nothing on you, but you've just been arrested or whatever. Like, you know, whatever happens, I know I ain't going to go to jail. For example, one time certain youths came to the area and they stabbed up one of my peoples them 19 times and I got nicked for it. I got nicked for attempted murder. Imagine they nicked, they nicked me. They was looking for me. They said my full name on the radio. I knew I, I wasn't going to get in trouble or nothing like that. For one, I know they don't have no evidence on me. It's just that they saw me on the on the CCTV in a local shopping centre. And for two, when my friend is okay, when he comes around, he's like, nah, man, you got the wrong person. In those situations there, yeah, you falsely accused of attempted murder and you know you're going to, well, I'm not going to say get away with it. There's nothing to get away with. But you know nothing's going to happen to you. You know that there's people that are going to vouch for you. Oh, yeah, it's easy to not be a snitch and keep your mouth shut. Because you know nothing's going to happen. You go on bus case, as they call it. But, like I said before, man, them go out and do something they're not supposed to. Cause police know who to go to. They know who to point the finger at when certain things happen in the ends. And they round up five men and men start picking off each other one by one. That's when you see who's not, a, you know, who, who's abiding by this not snitching cold. Trust me, you don't know what it's like being in an interview room. Might be 14, 15. First crime that you've been nicked for. Looking at two years. You're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you see, yeah, that's when you see who's, who's really about this not snitching life. You could all be sitting in the interview room. Certain man just shaking. Certain man just hella nervous. And when you're in the interview room, the policeman ain't gonna ask you no simple questions. What's your name? How old are you? Did you do it, yes or no? Huh? If only it was that easy. Policeman will come in the interview room like this, you know. Man all relaxed, man all hanging off the chair, you know. Relaxed. You go and fire some trick questions at you. So, um, why did you guys steal the victim's Nokia flip phone? No, I did not. But your co-defendant said that you stole the Nokia flip phone. And we found your fingerprints on it as well. What are you talking about? The boy had a Blackberry. Open and shut case. Man, all sip his coffee.
That's your solicitor hitting you in your arm and saying something dumb. Yeah. These are the trick questions that they fire at you in the interview. Certain men are in positions. The man them have gone out and done the madness. This one guy over here, he's usually with the man them. But on this one occasion, he weren't with the man them. He was probably doing something he weren't supposed to, but he weren't with the man them. The man them have gone out and done the madness. The police have nicked them and him. He's innocent this time. He just ain't got alibi because he's probably doing something he weren't supposed to. No alibi. He's called his friends. Beg them, please. Tell the police I was not there. They can't say nothing. Because their man are guilty. If they tell the police he was not there, well then you must have been there. The police were saying, well how do you know he wasn't there if you weren't there? These are the positions that you're in. You got bare people. Oh, stop stitching. Most of these people, oh man, you know, God forbid this happens, but most of the people, if they were in positions where, you know, they were guilty of crime, but they're snitching. They're snitching. Of course they're snitching. You know how I know? Man, they are threatening, gather threatening over a 30 day lockdown. You might do a something and end up doing 30 years. What are you talking about? People hanging themselves. Over lockdown. Over four or five month lockdown. People threaten over a 30 day lockdown. The police could be looking to lock you up for 10 years. What are you talking about? About stop snitching. You don't know what you're talking about. But it's always the people who have never lived that lifestyle. Never come close to that lifestyle. I love to talk about oh, stop snitching, stitching this. And what are you talking about? You don't know nothing about the roads. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. You don't know, you don't know, it's like, even like, like, phone robberies, yeah? Back in the day, whew, what, 2000 and, whew, between 2005, 2008, my goodness me, phone robberies, it, this, the judges were sick and tired of young black men going around robbing people, phone robberies. That Sony Walkman phone. Listen, if you carried that Sony Walkman phone when it first came out, you were getting sucked. You That phone was a walking £50. Man them used to go on eats. That's what they used to call moves back in the day. That's what you used to call robberies back in the day. Man are going on eats. And when man them get nicked for doing an eat, they're looking to throw the book at you. They're sick. They want to make an example. You're sick and tired of young black boys going and robbing people for phones and that. And a lot of these people who talk about a snitch and that, <laughs> it just makes me laugh because if one of their family members was murdered, they would want the perpetrators to get caught. So wh wh where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? It's all the fake people that come on social media or even talk amongst their friends, oh, snitching this, snitching that. Snitch is not cowardly. You're brave, you're taking action. It's only, it's only cowardly when, you know, you don't want to do the full sentence and then you decide to drag other people down and that, or you're giving the police information about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with your crime. Yeah, that's cowardly. You're trying to drag other people down. Although they're doing wrong, they ain't got nothing to do with you. You do the crime, you do the time. People need to stop hollering about oh, this, this uh, snitching to snitching that. I'd love to see what people would be like in those situations even if they're just faced with a local two years well two years are a long time anyway but faced with two years you see them sing like they're in the x factor you got gal acting like they're bad and oh yeah my man's this and that these are the same girls i've seen them on news reports crying like you can see them in their mugshot they're tearful because they know Whatever they've been nicked for, they're going to be going to jail for a long time. These are the same girls. Oh, this man's a snitch and red tail. What are we talking about, man? It's all the fake people that are snitching this, snitching that. Like, I even remember when I got stabbed. 
The police were trying to put pressure on me, you know, like, do you know who they are? What's their names? And I heard back then, this is 011, 2011, if you get stabbed, if you're a victim of knife crime, then the police them, or whoever, they'll pay you if you submit people's names and there's a conviction. Me, I ain't give a fuck. Man, I fix them, man, there different ways. You don't need to be, you know, submitting no one's name or nothing like that. But even that, submitting man's name, going to trial, standing up in court in front of a bunch of people you don't know, blah, that takes guts. That's not what cowards do. Cowards don't face the music. Cowards, they keep their mouth shut. They avoid trouble. They avoid facing the music. Imagine having to stand up in court as a, a victim of crime, like a serious crime, not a man boxing in the video. I'm talking about a serious crime. Imagine, imagine a woman having to face a man that done the evil to her. Having to relive that moment over and over and over again. Is that person a snitch? Oh, no, in that situation, that person's not a snitch. Oh, so, so where do we draw the line? That's what I'm saying about this snitching thing. Now, obviously, I agree in that situation. If a man done an evil to a woman, then, you know, she's giving information about him, whatever. Yeah, you damn right you're not a snitch. But then, if a man gets stabbed by someone... And that person gives you information about the person. Does that make that person a snitch? This is what I'm saying. This, this snitch thing, this is why I'm saying people are just chatting shit. People are just fling it out. Oh, yeah, snitching, uh, whatever. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You know how much balls it takes, how much courage it takes to have to go up in court and start giving information about a man, reliving that, that moment. In front of people you don't know, you know. Telling people... Your intimate details, intimate details of the situation in front of people you don't know. Most of you lot here, fucking cowards, scared to even give a fucking toast at your own birthday party. I know, man, act like they yeah, the hardest out, whatever in it, swag, drip, whatever. You would have thought them man there is confident. These are the same man at their one-year-old youth's birthday, they didn't even give a speech. A next man, their uncle gave a speech on their behalf. Like that's cowardly. But it, it you know what I mean, it takes bulls to have to go up in court and stand on trial and have to talk and set certain chat and that in front of people you don't know, man. But the people then that do that, they got bulls, they got courage. That's not what cowards do.